So we want to begin a series of screencasts on confirmation. And with confirmation, we're going to first consider functional groups that predominate with single bonds. So we're talking alkanes, cycloalkanes, alkyl halides, alcohols, and ethers. Uh, so we'll start with the most simplistic of these functional groups, the alkane. And what we want to do first is to review the ways that we can draw molecular structure. So we learned in molecular representations that we can draw a terse structure in which we show approximately 109.5 degree bond angles, 120 degree bond angles for alkenes, 180 degree bond angles for alkynes. And so this first podcast is going to center around uh, a new way of rendering molecules called a Newman projection. Before I begin to draw this for you, I think it's really important that you have a nice visualization of how these Newman projections work. So I'm going to ask you to do something a little different and just pick up a pencil or a pen and hold the pencil or pen in the horizontal X plane and this is going to represent a sigma bond between two carbon atoms or between a carbon atom and a hetero atom like bromine or oxygen or nitrogen. And if you rotate this pencil or pen such that you're looking down one end, you're looking down the barrel of the pencil or the pen, this is really what a Newman projection is. It is intended to show the torsional angles between atoms bonded to adjacent carbon atoms. So if we look at slide 411, you see a somewhat traditional terse structure. And we have three hydrogen atoms that are rendered in red that are bonded to carbon 1. And we have three hydrogen atoms that are rendered in blue that are bonded to carbon 2. Remember that any three points define a plane. So relative to carbon 1, the hydrogen, which is a straight line, is in the same plane as that carbon. And the carbon that, we have, that we're going to call carbon number 2 is also a straight line from carbon number 1. These are in the same plane. The wedge, the shaded in um, hydrogen that you see um, along this axis, indicates a hydrogen that is coming out of the plane of the screen towards the viewer, whereas the dash represents a hydrogen that is going into the plane of the screen away from the viewer. Now, if we rotate around this central axis, we will get a conformation called a sawhorse. A sawhorse and its complete rotamer, so I get this by completely rotating 90 degrees. So when I completely rotate by 90 degrees, I get the Newman projection. When I rotate about 45 degrees, I get the sawhorse. You can begin to look at the relationships between the hydrogens rendered in blue and the hydrogens rendered in red. We call this a torsional angle. Torsional angles are angles between four atoms. For example, in the sawhorse, we can render one of the hydrogens in blue as atom one, the carbon to which it's bonded as atom two, the carbon to which carbon two is bonded, which in our case is carbon one, would be atom three, and the hydrogen that is bonded to carbon one is rendered as atom four. And so the bonding relationship between the blue hydrogen and the red hydrogen is best depicted in this Newman projection. If you use just a little bit of geometry, in a circle you have 360 degrees, so if we split this up with three hydrogens that we've rendered in red, these bond angles are 120 degrees. Therefore, the hydrogen in blue appears to bisect this hydrogen-hydrogen bond. And so the hydrogen in blue 
relative to the hydrogen in red is a 60 degree torsional angle. That is given a relationship that we're later going to characterize as one staggered and two gauche. But on this particular podcast, what I really want to focus on is how we draw the Newman projection. So I'm going to use a more difficult example because ethane is really one that's nice to use in the beginning, but there, it doesn't really help you solve any real world chemical problems. So let's start with something just a little bit more complicated, N-butane. And I am going to render all of the carbons in circles and I'm going to label them. And the two I'm going to label correspond to the two carbons on whose axis I'm going to look down. I am going to look down the C2, C3 bond axis. And so my eye is oriented such that carbon two is the atom that I can see directly. Since I'm looking down the bond axis, I will not be able to see carbon three. Now, let's take a little closer look at the conformation because we have some hydrogens that we need to place explicitly. And I want to render those in different colors so that we're clear what happens to these hydrogens when I draw this Newman projection. So I'm going to have as the wedge on carbon two, the hydrogen that's coming out of the plane of the screen, that's going to be rendered in green. Hydrogen going into the plane of the screen will be rendered in red. Hydrogen on carbon three that's coming out of the plane, I'm going to render in blue. And the hydrogen that's going into the plane of the screen on carbon three, I'm going to render in pink, for lack of a better term. Probably mauve or whatever. Girls can tell me what it should be when I see you in class. All right. So what I want to do is I want to look down the C2, C3 bond axis. And the way that we do the Newman projection is the carbon that we see is a dot. And the carbon that we cannot see is an open circle. Now, as I begin to rotate around the C2, C3 bond, I'm only going to be able to see three things directly. I will be able to see the methyl group. And this methyl group is right here. The hydrogen that I've rendered in green, the one that was coming out of the plane, when it undergoes this type of rotation, will be to the right. And notice it's 120 degrees from the methyl group. The hydrogen that was in going into the plane of the screen is now coming out to the left. All three of these atoms are 120 degrees apart. And so these are the, these are the substituents, if you will, that are directly bonded to carbon two. Now on carbon three, I have a methyl group. And notice that this methyl group, which is carbon one, and this methyl group, which is carbon four, are 180 degrees relative to each other in terms of its dihedral. So I need to reflect that in the Newman projection. And I think on the Newman projection now, it's very simple to see that both of these methyl carbons are 180 degrees apart. The hydrogen that was coming out will now be going to the right. 
Notice I see them bonded to the circle, but I do not see them bonded to the dot. That's reflecting the fact that the hydrogen in blue is bonded to carbon three, but not bonded to carbon two. And finally to the left, I have the hydrogen rendered in pink that was going into the plane of the screen. This is an example of a Newman projection for N-butane. This relationship is very important because the two biggest, bulkiest groups attached to each carbon, which in this case are our methyl carbons, are as far away from each other as possible. We call this anti. Anti means the biggest and bulkiest groups have a dihedral angle of 180 degrees. This is a staggered conformation, but staggered is a family of conformations, not just one. And so we don't want to use it very often. Now, again, I can rotate around the carbon carbon bond. So let's imagine holding the back carbon steady and rotating the front carbon. We will want to build a plastic model of this molecule to really be able to see this phenomenon. But what I'm going to ask you to do right now, the back carbon stays the same. And so I can automatically draw the back portion. And it's going to stay just as it was. Methyl group coming up. Hydrogen rendered in blue down and to the right. Hydrogen rendered in mauve down and to the left. It does not change. But I am going to rotate the front carbon by 60 degrees, which means when I rotate this by 60 degrees, the hydrogen in red will be exactly where the methyl group is. The hydrogen in green will be exactly where the hydrogen in blue is. And the methyl group will be exactly where the hydrogen in mauve is. So let me draw this. And they really are on top of one another but this is two-dimensional surface. We got to make it look like it's three-dimensional. So I kind of just draw them to the side like this. And when you look down the barrel of this, you see that these are much more crowded this is called an eclipsed conformation. An eclipsed conformation is defined as dihedral angles of zero degrees. These are not of equal energy. When the anti is in place, you have an energy minimum. When we have a, an eclipse conformation, it is a local energy maximum. And we're gonna have three staggered conformations and we're gonna have three eclipse conformations. And if you use a little bit of imagination, you can predict that when the two methyls are eclipsed, that's gonna be the highest in energy. So, this conformation is going to represent one of the eclipsed, whereas this one is going to represent one of the staggered. In the next podcast, what I want to do is to take this example and to draw all three staggered conformations and to draw all three eclipse conformations and then to draw this in a potential energy versus conformational angle map that will become a critical uh, skill that I will expect you to master for the next exam. So for now, let's consider quickly 
drawing the Newman conformation of the following compounds. Let's do one for propane. Let's do one for 2-methylbutane. Let's do one for 2-butanol. Let's do one for 2-3-dichlorobutane. And what I want is for you to draw one eclipse conformation and one staggered confirmation. So in class, I will refer back to these four problems and we will look at them in detail.